What's up everybody, this is Steve from Altcoin Buzz. If this is your first time tuning in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you like to get news and alerts about what to invest in cryptocurrencies and altcoins. If you've already subscribed or you feel like getting alerts with up to the minute notifications, go ahead and ring the bell. That way your phone can be like, bing, bing, what's that? It's time to make some money. All right. So crypto files, there's something happening out there right now. You may or may not have heard of it. It's called crypto kitties. What? Yeah, crypto kitties. So you might have heard of it because either A, you're collecting them because it's the first crypto electable. That's crypto and collectible. It's kind of like Beanie Babies, Pokemon cards, Tamagotchi, all that sort of stuff. Um, except people are breeding them through the blockchain, specifically on Ethereum. So this is an other application of ERC-20 tokens other than creating a cryptocurrency. They've created a 256-bit genome of kittens of which people are able to buy, breed, and collect and sell to each other. So they, they're not necessarily meant to be a store of value like Ethereum per se, but some people have already started making tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars in these last week and a half selling and breeding these cats. So it is serious business. What's going on with it? It is clogging up the blockchain. So that everything's off the chain here. And you'll notice Ethereum's taking a little bit of a dip. That could be because Bitcoin soaring over 14,000, check that out, 14,281. And Ethereum is down about 5% since yesterday. But Ethereum's been slowing down because people are breeding crypto kitties. You got to listen up. It is eating up double digit percentages of the mining power on the Ethereum blockchain. So this is the very first really um, game. But if you want to call it mass adoption, there's not that many people even yet breeding and selling these crypto kitties because you have to know how to create a wallet. You have to install, Met install MetaMask on your browser and you have to know how to use addresses and tokens. So this is really meant as a passive system for people who understand blockchain already to, to get started on the ground level. So there's incentives for people who want to get competitive in this space and make some money um, by starting early. That way they can get these lower generation cats that breed faster and we'll dive into what that's all about. But if you're wondering why Ethereum's tanking, it might have something to do with it. It might not. But um, and, and it's not necessarily to say that this is something you should buy as an investment, you know, the rest of the team is kind of intrigued by it. None of us, to my knowledge, actually own any of these cats yet. Um, and you're probably about to see why, because one, they're not cheap. Um, and that that's interesting in and of itself. But t let's take a look at this. This is a third party site called kittysales.herocoop.com. And this is ranking the peer to peer prices that people have paid in ether for their crypto kitties. If you look at the top cat, Cat number four has sold for 107,000 USD at the time. Currently, with Ethereum's value, it sold for 107,692. The very first cat created, which made news, was $107,659. That's no joke. That should get you guys interested because you have to know that the people who bought those cats initially probably only paid a series of about $20, $25. Still pretty crazy. But um, those ID numbers um, signify... I believe what sale it was or what number cat they are. So to first understand it, all these cats are unique due to the 256 bit encrypted genome. And with each of those 256 bits, they've assigned different genetic features. It could be stripes, color, background color, eyeballs, teeth, fur, patterns, you name it. You can breed cats together and there are recessive and dominant genes, but there is no rarity system for these cats. So what's driving up this price is partially the utility of these cats. The earlier generations actually breed faster, have a quicker re recovery time in between breeding sessions of which they can produce new offspring. And unlike the birds and the bees, these cats seem to lay eggs. So let's take a look at the dashboard and tell you guys uh, basically how you can get started. So you're going to go to CryptoKitties.co. That's uh, C-R-Y-P-T-O-K-I-T-T-I-E-S dot C-O. And then it's going to ask you if you don't already have the browser extension MetaMask installed, it's going to ask you to install that. So that's going to become your Ether wallet. And it's also going to help protect your, your privacy while you're on the CryptoKitties website. <clears throat> then after you get that installed, you're going to have to purchase your first kitty. And that's where you come into the marketplace. So it tells me right now, you don't have any kitties. Shame on me. Oh, look, I could buy a Gen Zero. 
that one's good because that means it's fast. But are you going to pay 4.08 Ether at $436 per coin? Rack it up, right? That's about $1,500. That's just to get one cat. You can't breed it yet. You're going to have to get into that breeding system and figure it out. So now you're going to need another cat. Or you could pay somebody to breed your cat with their cat. And then you can sell the offspring. And then they get paid the money from you in Ether to breed that. <clears throat> this is crazy economy here, right, guys? So... Let's if you but let's say you wanted to just cheap out and check it out and you wanted to buy one of this one of these relatively cheap cats at 0 0.04 ether coming in at about 16 17 dollars you can get your feet wet with a gen 16 and unfortunately its speed of which it procreates is called plotting I hadn't seen that before but it doesn't sound fast to me compared to fast on gen 0 and swift on gen 3 and what the generations mean is the first cats that are put into the system by the manufacturer or by the designers in this case are called gen zero <clears throat> so those cats are typically the most desirable from a breeding standpoint those cats are sold directly from the um kit the, co the kitty coders and then the rest of the generations are bred from users so first generation is one series of offsprings and two first generations get together they produce a second generation so sit by each generation gets progressively weirder or un more unique but they also tend to get slower. Not always true, but generally the case. All right, so let's see some more kitties. You can see that each one of these is supposed to be unique among those 256 different genes and different variations and traits. I've even seen some online that were ducks or they have costumes and things like that. There's nothing necessarily that dictates whether your cat is in particular gonna be worth a lot of money. Since there's not really a rarity system, it really is based off of people's actual interest, either in its traits, such as its ability to breed or recover from breeding, or in its colors and its and its desirability. So it's all kind of what looks good is good. See these big fluffy eyes here, but that doesn't necessarily make it a expensive cat. You got camouflage here. It seems like early into the system, um, people are seem to desire the cats that can breed quickly. So let's say you grabbed a cat. Now there's other things you can do here. You can do what's called siring a cat. So we have the for sale cats. These are ones you can buy. And again, they seem to all be about anywhere from four to I've seen 20 ether, which is just nuts. And so once you get your cat, if you don't have a second cat, you can mate them here um, in what's called siring. And in this case here, somebody's got a snappy cat that's a Gen 9. And if you breed that cat with your cat, you'll have to pay that user 0 0.0189 ether. And then your cats will be stuck breeding for a period of time. You'll lay the egg and then you'll keep the second cat of which then you can sell or breed um, i'm not sure if there's any rules against inbreeding on here but that's how other cats come into the marketplace other than more gen zeros and other types of cats being issued by the original game designers um, let's go back to the amount of money that has traded hands so this probably doesn't take into account the amount of money that's been generated by the game designers but it does uh, show that about seven and a half million US dollars equivalent of ether has been traded between users for the sale and siring, of, or specifically just the sale of cats. 45,510 cats that are unique have been sold 56,373 times. So somebody's re-gifting and re-homing these cats. They're certainly not getting their forever homes. But um, if you're looking to jump in on this, you know, comment below and let us know what your, what your thoughts are. Do, do things like crypt, crypto lectables, like these crypto kitties, have just as much intrinsic value in the marketplace as, say, uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum itself? Or is this actually taking it to a whole new level that makes it something that's even more desirable than a Bitcoin? Because from one Bitcoin to the next, other than it holding a market value, there's really nothing that's an identifier about it. Nothing is necessarily on the surface unique about my Bitcoin versus your Bitcoin other than how it appears in the blockchain. In this case, I don't know anybody currently accepting CryptoKitties as a form of payment, and it certainly doesn't appear to have been designed as something that was meant to be a form of payment, but they've created the Pokemon craze, that holy trifecta of what it takes to make something collectible, um, give it a marketplace, and drive demand for it. Will the next set be as successful? You know, what, is someone going to come out with collectible unicorns or Dungeons and Dragons with cryptocurrencies or something of that effect, you know, World of Warcraft style? You know, but what it should show to you is that crypto kitties being the first major application to hit with all these other blockchain applications, especially being built on Ethereum's backbone, 
if those end up getting mass adoption from a bunch of users like CryptoKitty is, then we're going to see the mining resources become constrained and slowing down the system, which will mean that they'll either need to increase the gas limit, the amount of, of ether that we pay for the mining process of transferring things, or they're going to have to increase the mining resources, which is a really daunting task given the, the cost that it takes to put together a mining rig and the amount of electricity that goes into the mining operations for those coins. Drop your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure you subscribe before you leave. Tell your friends. <laughs>